Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every week. And today is on the PSA dagger. Now this is from Palmetto State Armory. Now whether you have the dagger or an optic cut version or threaded barrel or even the dagger micro or the new saber dagger line, whichever model you have, cleaning and maintenance is not only important, but fairly straightforward and easy to do with just a couple of things to look for as you go through the process. So I'm gonna explain everything you need and let's dive right into cleaning. If you've never ever cleaned a handgun before or this is your first handgun or if you've never cleaned your dagger before, this is the video for you and I will drop all of the links to all of your cleaning supplies down below because I get them all off of Amazon. So it's pretty easy. Links will be down below. First and foremost, you will need some gloves. You'll be working with some chemicals. Protect those hands. If anything, you won't have to smell all that oily residue all day long. You'll need some cotton patches or ripped up cotton t-shirt pieces. Small like this, about two inches, one and a half, two inches or so. Circular because you'll need to clean a barrel out that is a nine millimeter barrel. So you're nothing too big, you don't want to get it jammed up, nothing too small, won't do anything. A little squirt bottle, a little dropper bottle, a little needle tip there for precision. These both have Break free CLP cleaner, lubricant preservative. You can use whatever firearm cleaner, lubricant preservative you like. CLP, been using it my entire time owning firearms, well over a decade, works great, has not failed me yet. Now, if you run into some serious filth in there, a lot of residue, carbon buildup, you might need a solvent. This is a solvent cleaner. It is a hops number nine gun bore cleaner. Really scrub out that barrel. If you've shot a lot and have not cleaned it, you may need to get some hops number nine. Over here, Tipton plastic picks. These are for getting really deep into some of those little tight spaces and rails. You'll need a pull through. They come in a boar snake as well, which is kind of like a rope with a brush attached to it. This actually is a pull through that spins. You can put attachments on there. You'll need a nine millimeter brass brush. You'll also need a pull through loop like that. And if you have the rope, you, they're usually a loop on the end of the rope. You can use that as well. The rope ends up needing to, the snake, the boar snake there ends up, you can actually use it as the rope as well. And then you can either use some old toothbrushes, which I ended up running out of some old ones and you get some new cheap ones because that's really the way to go, or a actual cleaning brush with nylon bristles. And of course you'll need your PSA dagger. Let's dive in. First thing, safety. So you pick up your dagger, drop the mag, it does use Glock mags, works really well with them, not just the Magpul mags. Check the chamber, check again. Really look in there, because next up, you gotta pull that trigger. So pull the trigger once you checked everything, and then you reach up here. This is a Gideon Omega optic, fantastic red dot. I see right there, nice big window. Pull back just slightly, activate your light if you want to for fun. Pull both these tabs down, one on each side, let go. This slides right off. Now you have your slide assembly, your frame right here. Frame is pretty much done. You can see how filthy this one is. It is well overdue for a cleaning. This thing I take to the range pretty much every single time. Got a holster for it for my range belt. Zero issues whatsoever. It's honestly, it's, it's a great, great handgun. Recoil spring, pop up, out, now. Barrel, notice something. A lot of you might not have a threaded barrel. If you have a threaded barrel, guess what? It's not coming out. So, what you do, unscrew the thread protector on the end of a threaded barrel. And if you don't have a threaded barrel, you don't have to worry about this. I upgraded mine. In fact, you probably see quite a bit of upgrades on this particular <laughs> dagger. This is not like, especially the dimpling I did up here. New trigger. I need to do a full review on the upgrades I did because it really did make the dagger Almost perfect, especially with that price point. Upgraded the slides, upgraded, upgraded the slide to cuts, new sights. Lines up just above where the red dot is. You can kind of line it up perfectly, have your backup irons. So this is fully field stripped, we'll say, for cleaning. All right, so step one, I usually go over here, grab a patch or two. Grab your little CLP in your spray bottle. 
spray it on there a little bit. And then if you want with you know a little cap here, you can kind of clean this up a little bit, especially around that ring, little ring there on the end. Some of these caps, depending on what you get, have a uh, little O-ring on there. There is definitely an O-ring in here, usually right here on the end of the barrel, a little compression. Take this patch. Use the patches as much as you need. Cleaning is really about how well you think it's clean. If you think you've got every nook and cranny done for wiping this down and it looks good and you're done, then you're done. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to soak this thing down. We'll wipe it down. Just go back and forth, the exterior of the barrel. Now you got the cap done. And you can take your pick, get in little crevices here, go over here. Now this part, you can see where this carbon is gonna be kind of an issue, all that build up there, especially on this nice gold barrel. So what I'll do is just spray a little on the end there, let it sit. Also, you're gonna need one of these gun cleaning mats. Depending on which kind you want, you can get some from TechMat. I'll put some links down below for Amazon. You can get one for any type of handgun you have. So I go and grab the guide rod assembly, wipe off the end, and then I hold it. Sometimes I put my nail right here, and you can simply just spin it all the way down. Usually it's not too dirty, so you don't have to worry about too much of a deep clean. You can kind of see, nice spiral there, clean it out nice. If you want, you can take your brush, do a little scrub. Look at that. Let it soak a minute. It does wonders, it really does. Brushes don't have to be too clean because you're about to wipe these down with a patch. Get a new patch here. And you don't need to keep this really super wet with any kind of cleaner or lubricant on there because we're gonna go through the end and lubricate the points we need to. And I'll show you that. And again, this is a gold barrel. It's gonna show so much more than a non-gold barrel would. A regular black or nitride gray or whatever you end up picking up. All right now, the internal parts of this whole thing is right here. So what you can go, do is you actually want to pull through. So you want to pull whichever direction you want to go. You want to go the way the round goes. So the nine millimeters going like this. The bullet's going out. So you want to go and put this in here. And I find pulling is best. You, I mean, you can push, but a lot of times a pull through method is the way to go. So you can go and just start with the brush. Put a little bit of oil on the brush grab this handle and just pull through. Let it spin with the grooves and the rifling there. Quick commercial break for you guys. This isn't really a sponsorship or anything like that. This is just really a short story. About a year ago, I went to Palmetto State Armory, did a whole factory tour, did a series of videos on that. Went to the headquarters, met up with the guys at Right to Bear, protectwithbear.com, and this is a criminal and civil defense insurance company I never really thought about it. We insure a lot of things in our lives, and obviously we train and have a lot of fun with different things at the range and tools you might have in your waistband. So what I thought about it was that it's probably a good thing to have insurance if you end up having to use that tool that you're training with so often. So check them out. You can use the code GEAR10 to save you 10% off your membership, which is good because you get a kickback. I get a little kickback from that as an affiliate with them. And I also have right there as the insurance of my choice as well. Currently for the last year, haven't had to use it yet, but it's nice to know that safe of mine that if you call that number after something happens, that person in the line actually has your best interest in mind, which nowadays, you never know. All right, back to the range. And then do it again. Now if you have a boar snake, choose that route, you can do Something similar to what I'm doing here. Just keep going back and forth. Drop the one end in here, let it slide out, yank it through. 
Now to get real deep into these grooves is the best part. It's kind of satisfying, honestly. Get this first one nice and soaked here. Wrap a patch around there, get it started. Now pull that through, check this out. So now what you did is you grabbed much more in the grooves here. I'll wrap it better this time. Wrap it towards the base here so it doesn't go sliding off as much. Just be careful when you're running this through the barrel. You don't want to like jam it in there, scrape anything up. Let's try this again. There's a better one. See that? It's actually pulling out any kind of residue in the grooves in that barreling. In that rifling, sorry. <laughs> so you can see that there. I think we're good. Even that, I mean, you can do one more. This is where you can actually go and do the pull through if you want, just to kind of see how it's doing. You can run this again. Just know this is dirty. So sometimes I'll go and I'll put this pull through in. And you can do this as many times as you need. That's why we got like five, six hundred rounds through it. Oh, I did my whole, see I did the whole method wrong there. Slowly let it go through. It'll spin. And that's fine. For me, that's fine. I mean, you're looking down this barrel, looks nice and clean. We got the grooves cleaned. And again, this is all about how clean you want this to be. And it's really up to you. So now you have these three pieces done, right? So you take this patch, just a little bit left over here run through here, see where we're at. How dirty is this? Might need some more CLP. Sometimes you take a patch with a brush. Get in those grooves, kind of see that helps quite a bit. Get in those grooves real good. Not a whole lot you need to take apart in the slide. You want to be careful about the firing pin channel and everything. I'll show you that here. One more patch. Pretty much done with the pull through stuff there. This through, take a pick here, run it in the grooves back and forth there. Look at that. See that pick really gets in the corners of the grooves, not just the groove itself. I do like these picks quite a bit. Come here. Let's get back in here a little bit. See that? Go around here. Around the plunger here. All right, now, the important part here is you have a firing pin and a firing pin channel right in here, right? You don't want to just go and dump anything down there. No CLP straight down there, right? So what you want to do is you can take a patch that's been kind of used up a little bit and start wiping this down, clean off that face. <laughs> we can try one for the actual optic there. <laughs> Such a great optic. And then what you can do is you can actually go and get a fresh one and you want to angle this down like so, because again, you don't want to get CLP in the actual firing pin channel. You can take apart the firing pin once in a while Take off that back plate, pull the whole thing out, but you just don't have to all the time. It's usually not a problem. But it's something you should do occasionally. So now you have down here is an extractor. Now the extractor, believe it or not, that's all the extractor right there in that line. There's an extractor right here. I'll show you the pick. Right there. All right. And Crazy enough, that extractor gets so dirty. And if it's too much buildup, if you can imagine what's gonna happen is gonna be a failure due to the extractor. So I like to get in there with a pick every single time and don't really do a lot of force or anything like that, but just clean out the channel. See that, there's even more, it's all that right there. Like 
this, clean it up a little bit. Honestly, this is looking fine from now on. Let's clean it off. Ooh, this optics get loose. I can't really tell. It doesn't look like it. Let me get a little bit in the front. I'm torque these down again, make sure they're good. I shoot this thing a lot. I need to finish the review on this optic though, for sure. Slide's done. Happy with that. Frame, frame. This one particularly looks filthy. Look at that. Better if I just wipe it down. Oh yeah. It's a simple wipe down. Now the frame I want to be a little more careful about. Uh, there's nothing you really have to take apart here, but you can kind of see the trigger mechanism, the trigger bars right here. All of the parts of the trigger, which I ended up swapping this out for this one right here. This is all pretty delicate. You don't want to just be like jamming this up or bending anything by accident, right? So I take a fresh patch, get some CLP on there, and just kind of go over with your fingers, maybe the brush. You definitely want the picks here for the rails in a second. Look at that. All right, one more because that actually was pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever actually cleaned this dagger, to be honest with you. I've already done a full review on it. It's been in a few videos. Let's see. Again, these picks. Tipped in picks of Amazon down below. They really do a good job. I've had these ones forever. I mean, they're kind of hard to break. They're, they're a nice hard plastic. And they're bendy too on the tips there. So I'm not breaking them too much. But a little bit of CLP goes a long way, even with one patch. And there's usually some residue left over you can take and run another patch over it. But now that I took out that finger groove on the grip, this thing, honestly, is one of my favorite handguns to shoot, which is crazy. Obviously, you know the price point. I don't really like grips with finger grooves anyways. Let's see. Here, I don't want to leave too much residue in here or anything anything really any fibers either the light down lights pretty good occasionally I'll go down into the magwell use your finger just go around kind of see it's kind of dirty but it's not gonna really harm too much but you do want to go maybe run a quick wipe through there all right, this looks good. I think we're in good shape. We hit all the rails. Everything's nice and shiny again. Slide stop looks good. Kind of see that right there. What I don't like is the magazine release on here. It's always pretty stiff. I think that's a pretty common issue with these. All right, cleaning done right now. You can't just leave it like this. You don't want to have it soaking wet with CLP. So I actually got these little needle tip bottles which again, a little bit of CLP in there, right? And now when we're gonna lubricate this to get it back together, so the frame's pretty simple. It's these four points right here. So you got one right here, one right here, just a little bit right there. A little bit drops elsewhere, it's fine. You're gonna look for, really look for wear marks, so there's not too much elsewhere around here. Maybe a little on top there, but that's it for the frame. All right, so now we're gonna take this and we're actually going to hit right here, which we know is a nice wear point. All right, right there. We already put on the rails there, so we don't really have to load up any in the internal slide rails there. Oh, look at this little spot here. There you go. Yeah, you go, double check you didn't miss anything. I'm gonna put a little down here, right there. Maybe a dab right here. Again, you don't wanna drip it down there, that's part of the firing pin channel. This whole plate pops off though, and that's how you get into this firing pin channel there. Now for the barrel, this one, you see a little bit of wear right there. Flip it over, I drop a little wear right there. And I drop this back in, like so. Then I take my guide rod assembly. You can kind of see how this fits in. So there's a flat piece and then a part that actually goes and fits perfectly into that 
hole in the end of the slide there. Slide it in, push it all the way down. At this point, you can put your protector back on. Now that everything's all cleaned up, snug it down. Now simply put it back on your rails on the frame, rack it back, test your light, test the trigger. You're back in business. Now typically I will take off my gloves, grab a patch, and just, just do a quick wipe down because you have some leftover residue and really you can come over here and clean off your optic, which is probably covered in a little bit of CLP. And that's it. You have yourself a cleaned and lubricated, well-maintained Palmetto State Armory dagger. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, train hard at the range because you never know what's coming. Make sure you take care of the ones you love, and we'll see you all in the next review.